bad. one full year of vlogging. So I think the way that I want to kind of do the one year celebration and the end of the year celebration and, and the way to finish one full year of, of vlogging is by doing a Q&A with the dog. If you happen to notice that there's some noises and this going on, it's because there is. So these questions are all coming off of the video that I that I asked you guys for questions before because I said I wanted to do this. Uh, I waited until now to make it because uh, I'm lazy and there's not really much more to it than that. So there wasn't too many, so I'll probably just answer them all. So question one from Brad Wade uh, goes, what are your thoughts on plus size bikes? Uh, what would your dream ideal cross road time trial mountain bike setups be and why? That's Probably a big question to get into, but uh, my opinion on plus tire sized bikes, uh, they're okay. I, I've ridden a few of them, they're, they're fun. There's lots of traction. I can see why people would want to ride them. Uh, if I had the money, I would probably buy one myself, but there's other things that I'd rather have. My dream and ideal cross bike setup would be two identical cross bikes for an A and B bike that are uh, sort of long and low so that I would fit them really well and, uh, and wouldn't have any toe overlap. I'm not real picky on like the frame material. The only thing that I would definitely ask for is a threaded bottom bracket and not too much internal cable routing because that's just a headache. A dream road bike would be to not own one anymore. Uh, a dream TT bike would be built by Rob English. Uh, I'll put a picture of a Rob English TT bike up and you'll understand why. And then a dream mountain bike setup would be for around here, probably a, uh, for around here, I'd probably do a 29 inch wheel, uh, full suspension with 120 mils of travel. I don't know what bike that would be, um, but I think that would be absolutely perfect for around here. The Gefster, the Gefster asks, can you do a video on the fine line between when you should own a mountain bike versus when you should own a gravel bike and a mountain bike? Uh, yes, I can do a video on that. Um, I think it probably does need its own video. But simply put, um, I would say that if you're riding your gravel bike on single track like every single day and that's where you spend most of your time, maybe it is time to like jump over to a mountain bike because it can get quite annoying trying to ride something that isn't really supposed to be there. It's fun from time to time, uh, but you know, when you're gonna spend your whole life on single track or, or mountain bike trails and you're fighting too hard for it, um, that can get old pretty quick. I've definitely learned that the hard way. Venture Cyclist asks, where would you like to travel to so you could explore it by bike? Uh, that's like three answers. Um, if I was gonna travel somewhere with a mountain bike, the number one Answer to that would be Whistler. I would love to ride all of those trails. That would be the time that I would be very, very excited to ride a really, really big bike and just see how bad I actually suck at mountain biking. If it was for uh, cyclocross, uh, I would definitely love to go to Belgium during their cross season and uh, try and ride as many courses as I could with as many fast people as possible uh, so that I can start being like slightly better than I am. Even to watch, but I definitely want to ride those courses. 
Uh, but if I was to ride like a long, long brevet style uh, gravel ride, I think I would like to do uh, something like Grind Duro. Um, hang out with all those people. It looks like it looks like it kind of speaks my language. It looks like I would get along with all those people really well. It would be a really, really good time. Just a long day on a drop power bike on dirt roads. That would be a sweet way to explore that area. The ball player says, uh, tinkering is fun. You don't need any other reason for it. Uh, I agree. That wasn't a question. In fact, you didn't form it as a question, but I just wanted to agree with you. Uh, Harris Bran Casio, sorry if I didn't say that right, asks uh, or says, tell us the story of how you opened up a bike shop. Um, I didn't. The bike shop is not mine. Michael Munson, uh, you're commenting a lot on my stuff lately, I appreciate that. Uh, does the clear frames hinder you from checking from traffic behind you while riding, or is it still in the way like other frame types? Uh, the clear frame glasses that I have were definitely weird to wear at first, um, but they wear just like any other pair. I don't find they really do anything to benefit or take away from riding in them. Uh, I just like the way they look. Always be shooting, didn't ask a question, but did say uh, a live show would be cool, but make sure you give us a little notice so we can tune in. Um, I am terrified of doing a live show because I constantly have to uh, rethink what I'm saying all the time, and you guys would learn how bad I am at this, for real. Um, so yeah, maybe in the future. Uh, Colin, Colin McCregor asked a good question. Do you prefer a gravel bike on a suitably modified road bike or road on a suitably modified gravel bike? Uh, I would ride road on a suitably modified gravel bike all day. I would go as far as to say that riding a gravel bike on the road hardly hinders the ride whatsoever. If you're a decent enough rider and you're riding behind someone who's fast, uh, you're not going to get dropped because of that bike. Um, now a road bike on gravel, if, depending on what you have for clearance, you're probably not going to be able to fit a big enough tire on there for it to be comfortable or fun for very long. Besides, I road ride on the tri-cross with 38s all the time. Ride Alongside asks uh, what video equipment am I using? Um, right now I'm shooting this on a Sony A5000. Uh, typically I have my uh, GoPro Hero Session with me for almost everything. Um, I've shot full entire videos on this and no one's really complained about it. Uh, the stabilizer, the stabilizer I got on Amazon, I don't know what it's called, maybe I'll write it here. Um, it's okay. It took a little while to like get used to actually using it. I had to watch some videos of people who actually knew what they were doing to get it to a point where it didn't uh, have this bad pendulum effect. Would I recommend it? Uh, no. I always kind of like look for an excuse to use it, but pretty much everything I shoot I can do with just a tripod. Like any tripod will work. Um, so. I don't necessarily know if I would say that you need to go and buy a stabilizer to do what I do. Um, it was cool to like ride a skateboard in the shop up to a bike, uh, but if I keep doing that, I think it'll get old pretty quick. So, um, you know, for one shot out of 170 videos I've done, uh, I wouldn't say that you need a stabilizer. Uh, and then further to that, because I didn't read the whole question, um, was asked what would be my plans to change as time goes on. I would definitely go to another mirrorless camera that can support an external mic. That would be the only thing I would want. Jason Burke asked, did you or have you ever been on a bike maintenance course or was it all self-taught? I was never on a bike maintenance course, no. But I did learn everything I know from uh, mechanics that were working at Ideal Bikes before me. Uh, but no, I never did take a formal bicycle training course. Kind of kind of how a lot of people learn how to work on things. But bikes are getting crazy these days. Uh, so there's definitely one more that I wanted to go through because I think it was, it was a, a good way to end the year and to end uh, this Q&A. So this question is a long one, but it's also one that was uh, asked by Ride Alongside. Uh, so after a year of vlogging, can you share the experience with us? The highs, lows, 
What would you do differently if starting all over again? Uh, I imagine at times it's been incredibly challenging to post as frequently as you have, but it appears that you've had moments where you may have slowed down or didn't post as many per week slash month. Uh, care to share those reasons uh, and how you dealt with the pressures you put on yourself to post up regular content versus your responsibilities, priorities outside of YouTube? Uh, yeah, I would love to answer that. So when I started vlogging a year ago, there was kind of two reasons that I wanted to do that. Reason number one, and I've said it before, is I wanted to get more comfortable with doing more of this and having a camera around so that I could shoot a better video of the Cape Breton trip that me and my friends have always done. Uh, ironically enough, I didn't even shoot that video this year. We went and rode around the Cat Trail on fixed gears and I shot no video of it whatsoever. The reason I didn't was because I was scared that I was going to make the same mistake on a fixed gear while shooting video, lock my legs up and break my collarbone again about, you know, five hours away from the city that I live in. Um, but it did give me more confidence in talking to a camera and having more conversations like this, using a camera and being myself more in front of a camera instead of like acting silly or doing dumb things. Uh, the second reason was I had been making YouTube videos for about like a year uh, with no real growth, no nothing like really happening. It was kind of something I wanted to do and I wanted to explore a little bit more. Um, and probably the biggest thing I realized was people weren't coming to the channel and they weren't coming to watch the student cyclists or spin that for me they were coming because I titled something as like here's some information on the new specialized diverge um, they'd get their information and they'd be like all right enough of this idiot uh, on to the next idiot and I didn't want to be just another YouTube idiot anymore I just wanted to be someone that someone would be interested in seeing what they're doing so that people would want to watch videos like the Cape Breton video I wanted to make. And it, it, did, it worked. Within like the first two months, I believe, of vlogging, I went from like 500 subscribers up to 1,000. Uh, and then throughout the rest of the year, I'm now at, in my first year of vlogging, 3,600 and, and a little bit subscribers. So that just goes to show that if I can upload more regularly and be myself and make videos about stuff that I'm interested in that you guys are also interested in that growth will organically happen. And I think I got to a point where people were actually interested in what I'm doing no matter what it's titled. And that was kind of the secondary but should have been maybe the primary goal. Really what I wanted to do was just get better at this and become someone, uh, which is a little bit depressing. The highs and lows uh, I wouldn't necessarily say there's any highs or lows. Probably the biggest thing is that I, I use copying other creators as a bit too much of a crutch. I'm trying to get away from that more lately, but it, it is super, super tough because I'm not actually a very creative person. I'm just pretty good at talking a lot. Um, but creatively, I'm not super great at it. And most of the time I'm just called out for using the same music as Casey Neistat and like handling a camera like this. Um, that's totally fair. That's where I steal that from. So when I'm like called out for something like that, that's usually gonna be one of those moments where I don't upload for a bit because I'll be kind of brainstorming ways to try and be my own creative person uh, until I get back into the swing of things. Um, I definitely can get thrown off my game quite a bit by like people's criticism. And then in the summer, which is probably one of those areas where you see a lot less uploading happening, is because I have a lot more kind of going on. Uh, the shop is busier, so I'm kind of dealing with more stuff and I'm working more, um, along with there being someone else at the store. And uh, I never really felt super comfortable having the camera out with someone else in the store. It's just kind of an awkward, spot for me to be. It's something I need to get over. If I could do it all over again, there's probably really only two things that I would change. Um, I would say I wish I had have started earlier and gotten more comfortable with the camera out in public 
far sooner. Um, and the second thing would be that I wish that I had included my friends and people earlier so that they could get more comfortable around the camera. I could be more comfortable about having the camera out around them and the banter between us could have been included in the vlogs a lot sooner. I think they're a lot more fun to watch. I think that they're probably a lot more fun for me to edit. Uh, I definitely laugh a lot more when I'm out on a ride with friends who are like not afraid to be themselves in front of the camera. Uh, the last few videos that I put out were probably some of the most fun to edit that I've ever gone through. I know there's something else about this. Uh, here's your, uh, what those reasons were and how you dealt with the pressures of yourself to post regular content. Um, there was there was, in my opinion, zero pressure to actually be posting regular content. I think I just really like making these videos and getting feedback, so that's why I keep doing it. Um, it could very well get to a point where there is some responsibility. Um, that's what I'd like to get to. Uh, but right now, there's definitely no like pressure on myself to put anything out too soon. If there, if I'm not feeling something one day and I don't feel like uploading or making or shooting a video like this, I just won't do it. And I never put myself to like an upload schedule. I just upload when I want. If I have a video done and I'm happy with it, uh, I'll just upload it right then. Okay, um, that's that's gonna be it. That's gonna be the, the year end. One full year of vlogging video. Look at the camera. Say goodbye and thank you for watching and Happy New Year. Well, goodbye, thank you for watching and Happy New Year. Oh, and for, for those of you watching, I also made this hat. Pretty cool, huh?